Amen. There we go. Glory to God. Welcome to Heartland Church. How many of y'all uh, had any kind of a day today? So maybe something happened. and uh, Now, y'all, we all have days. So right now, we're just going to kind of shake that day off. Shake that day out of your mind. If you need to stand up, shake a little bit. Get that, get that stuff, get that stuff. I'm with you, Sarah. I'm with you. I mean, it's like, whew, whew. get up on off of me. I don't have to, I don't have to walk in that stuff. It is a privilege to gather together this Wednesday night. Love the body. Love you guys. Those of you who might be first-time guests, first-time uh, folks tuning in on Facebook, uh, we, we appreciate you guys. It's an honor and a privilege to have our first-time folks uh, here. Um, I want to, before we get to announcements, I, I, I want to read you something. I'm not going to say who because I didn't ask permission uh, before doing so, but I got a text uh, earlier this week, and it just spoke to me. It, it spoke to me about us as a body. It reads, my observations over the past three years are that people who are active in our church generally receive what they ask for and have no serious sickness. The people that are sick were before they came in, but they often recover. If Brownwood knew this, I would not be able to get a parking spot. Why have people not figured this out? You know, it speaks a lot for what God is doing here. It, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with us. It's just our obedience to his word and faith and loving on people and being consistent in that. And we don't have cancers running around in here uh, causing issues in the body. Um, that, just, that just ministered to me because it just goes to show that we are a loving body. We've got people who had pain that went away. That blesses me, Ronnie. Any, any good report on that is, man, that's a, that's a, that's a reason to, to shout glory. It really is. So kudos, kudos to the God in us. He does the exceedingly abundantly above all, above all that we can ask or think according to the power in us. So that's exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think in my humble, humble opinion. All right, great, great time hitched Sunday night. So we're, we're going to be looking forward to the next one. Uh, it's, it's just a good time together. The new members class, if you've been coming to Heartland Church for two months or more, uh, or by August the 18th, we'll have been coming for a couple of months. Uh, and already we've got a bunch of people on that sign-up sheet. There is a sign-up sheet on the table just to the right of the doors as you exit the foyer there. Uh, get your name down there, a phone number, uh, and an email address or just phone number. We may, we may text, we may call. Uh, but August the 18th is when we're going to do that. Now, membership classes immediately after church. We're going to feed you food, and then we're going to feed you word. We're going to feed you exactly what this body is all about according to the Word of God. And I always remind people, the, the pages of Scripture that you get in this are so powerful, and they're worth keeping and worth meditating over and worth going over and over and over and over. Because so many times if you've got an issue and just in, in life in general, you can go to that membership class and get a pretty good lead on where to go in the Word to address it. So that's coming up uh, August the 18th. Uh, Transition Sunday is the Sunday before that. So that's going to be really a pretty big day. Transition Sunday where our kids go from, uh, I guess, children's church to double digits, double digits to renovate. And uh, it's, it's a special time. So family and friends, you are more than welcome to join us for that. Invite folks. It's uh, We take that seriously, moving from uh, Bonnie to Russell to Heath and Haley. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. And they see it as a big thing. So 
when it's packed and people, lots of phones and people are taking pictures and people got tears strolling down their face because their babies are growing up. And next thing you know, they're getting married. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so be ready for that. And then that night, the, uh, the night of the uh, 11th is the next woman to woman. So, yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. It is this Sunday night, so that is the 28th. Okay. Okay. So, ladies, be prepared for this Sunday. That's good. They don't have so, so far to wait. Okay. I'm thinking. Huh? <laughs> they're, they're thinking, what? What you talking about, Willis? Why we got to wait so long? And nobleman, that's right, them computers, I guess. Nobleman tomorrow morning at 6.30, guys. Let's, uh, let's gather around the table. and uh, uh, We were packed out last Thursday. We were. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we are catching up to the ladies. You know, early on when this started out as a six-week study on Timothy, um, and then we just didn't want to stop. Holy Spirit didn't, didn't want to stop. He had no reason to not continue for men to minister to men. Uh, I remember one Sunday we were talking about we need, a, we need a big round table so we can all sit around that round table with our shields and our swords and, and big mugs of coffee. <laughs> I like that. So it's schooners of coffee. Hey. If you've ever seen Tyler Quay drink coffee, that's a schooner of coffee. Yes, ma'am. Big coffee and big Jesus. There you go. I like that. I like that. That's the nobleman. So that's tomorrow morning at, uh, at 630. And uh, I think we have just about covered it. Yep. We are looking forward to what God has for us tonight. I hope you came through here ready to receive. I hope you have your seed ready. I hope that if, if it's time to tithe, the tithe is there, and if not, the seed is there. Uh, oh, hang on. Let's not, I forget sometimes to run over here. Don't forget these change buckets. Ooh, that's good and heavy. i got to look and see because sometimes we get a little heavier on one side than we do the other. All right, guys. Got to do some damage over there, okay? That's renovate. All that money. That's where renovate gets the funds that they use and the tremendous transformation that has happened back there. Uh, and again, if you've never been back there, look, please take some time to run back there, especially on a Wednesday night. Run back there and just see the number of people, what Heath and Haley are doing back there, Nate and Titus and all the folks that are involved. Uh, it's, it's important. Um, we have... Really, as a, as a couple, and I know in our business, been focusing on how we address things. Do we address it in love? Do we address it in life as versus blessings? How many had an opportunity to address a situation in an improper way today? I'm not going to ask how many of us might have edged toward that improper way. You know what happens. So I just remind us, Deuteronomy 30, 19, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. You know, it's as simple as that. The world wants you to believe that you can ride the line. And you can't. If you think you're in a gray area, you're in the dark ditch. You're in the death ditch. Yes, you're cold, not even lukewarm, you're cold. Life or death, blessings or curses, you've got two choices. So I just remind you, when it comes to giving, whether it be a financial seed that you're sowing into somebody's life, whether it be the tithe that is settled, there's really, that's a non-negotiable point in, uh, according to the word, um, but when you're sowing seed, remember, uh, no matter how long ago that seed was planted, continue to water it. Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance, and seed 
sown years ago will be brought back to your remembrance. And remember to speak life to that. It's important because your words are life or death, blessings or curses. Proverb 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Don't think it. How many of you have ever carried a conversation on with yourself as you're driving down the road? You're in the car alone, you just start chattering. We need to do the same thing with faith-filled words towards our situations and specifically our seed. Okay? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Lord, that you've gone before us. You have prepared our way. We're not going to forget today the benefits, Lord. You daily load us, and today we've been loaded. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to honor you, to show our love for you, to present to you the tithe that is yours, the, the 10%, that part that is set apart, it's holy, and through that, you rebuke the devourer. And, Father, we thank you for opportunities to sow seed. We do it with cheerful hearts. We do it with love. And we do it not only in our love for you, but in our love for others, Lord Father. And pray, Lord, that we recognize daily our impact on others in need. We have the opportunity, and you provide sufficiency for every good work, Father. So we are not a people that lack. We are not a people that draw back. We stand with you and we stand on your word. We thank you that the seed sown, the tithe is fruitful and it multiplies. And Lord, we come in here tonight ready to receive of you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Brother Bob. Real quick, I have a quick announcement. Um, August the 17th at Howard Payne University is church, church fair, correct? Yes. And those of us that were uh, there to help uh, Brian and Mandy with that, um, my goodness, it, it's, that was phenomenal. That was amazing. It's to welcome all, if I'm correct, all the incoming freshmen that just want to know, hey, I'm, I'm coming to this little town called Brownwood, Texas. In the middle, we're right in the heart of Texas, and they're coming from all over the place and trying to find a house of worship. And we had the best time. And so August 17th is coming up. And I mean, Brian and Mandy, they had a big wheel going with prizes, you know, spin the wheel. And, and I, when I drove up with my, you know, representing Ecclesia t-shirt on and the, and the and the body was there the helping them and there was a line it, it was of, of kids waiting and it was hot that, it was hot that day and there was other churches and we were mingling and talking and it was just it was unified and it was amazing but anyway August the 17th is is this year's uh, church fair uh, at Howard Payne HPU there's incoming freshmen kiddos that are far from home some that are here, um, that they need a place to land. And so Heartland's going to be there. And so think about, uh, there's going to, uh, when they spin the wheel or whatever witty ideas that Brian and Mandy come up with, um, there's going to be prizes, things, you know, they need laundry soap. They need deodorant. Lord knows they need deodorant. And, <laughs> and things like that. And so when you're, when you're uh, giving, when you're sowing, uh, think about Ecclesia and think about church fair, okay? August the 17th, and pray for them because I know it's going to be really good. And pray for those kids, amen? And when Sarah has um, a, a, a quick testimony, and I know it, it's going to coincide with that, that text. Did you, Brother Brian, did you have something? The main street toward did y'all hear him get with brother brian after service if, if anybody wants to to be involved in that i highly recommend it i was going just to you know kind of see and before i knew it i was out there filming and going live and you know i never went to college so it was like hey you know this is cool and so uh, but anyway sarah would you come up because um this is going to bless you and it's going to just go hand in hand with the text that brother bob got 
Um, I just wanted to share this. A week ago, Saturday, I guess it was, we were in Lubbock, and my son called me and said, Mom, I have this weird pain, and it's in, like, my growing area, and it's bulging out. And when I got home, he was kind of walking like this, you know, and laying in the bed. And um, so me and Ty, we went into the room, and normally those types of things require surgery, usually what's called an inguinal hernia. And um, so me and Ty, we grabbed a hold of the word because we know that by his stripes, Corbin was healed and no surgery needed. So my re initial response was I wanted to look at it, and the Holy Spirit said, don't look at it. I said, okay. And so I didn't look at it, so I just, you know, we declared the word over it, and then Corbin, out of his mouth, because of what he's learning and renovate, what we're teaching at home, he said, in the morning, when I wake up, this is going to be gone. That was his declaration of faith. And in the morning, he woke up, the pain was gone. He actually ushered the Sunday morning after it and stood the whole service, no pain. So if you've got a hernia or any type of pain that requires surgery, God is the great physician. Grab a hold of that faith, speak over your body, and in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. make this super quick but brother Bob mentioned this scripture a while ago and it goes so along with what we're saying just through testimony and, and through tithing offering but in Deuteronomy 30 19 when he said I call heaven and earth to record this day against you I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live and the thing I wanted to point out because of why people experience the goodness of God Death is not a choice. He didn't say choose life or choose death. He said choose life because death is what automatically comes when life is not there. And, and so just take that situation, for example, when we heard the report of Corbin's pain and what's going on, there's an opportunity there to not choose life, to get into fear, doubt, worry, and unbelief. But we begin to choose life, take hold of it. And, and those choices come moment by moment, circumstance by circumstance, situation by situation. And each one of those, you have to, on purpose, I'm going to choose life in this moment. I'm going to choose life in this bad report, in, in whatever that circumstance is. So I just wanted to say that along with that. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Pastor Jason stuttered, come and just bend the nail over, brother. Amen. <laughs> Be in here tonight. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Let's all lift our hands to Jesus. Let's welcome the presence of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord for revelation knowledge. Cast your care upon him right now, whatever it is, and believe that you receive your answer tonight. Believe you take hold of it. Speak the victory. Speak the finished work. Ask him to reveal himself to you. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We've come for you, Lord Jesus. You're so real to us. We've come for you. We've gathered in your name. We've gathered in the name of Jesus. We've gathered in that name. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. Jesus makes us one, he said. Father, we believe tonight for the word of the Lord to go forth with power, with authority, with much accuracy. We thank you that that word is life to us because we find it, and it is health to all of our flesh. We expect people to be healed just hearing the word of the Lord. They came to hear the word and be healed. 
Many times throughout your word it says that. They came to hear and be healed. Not hear and be prayed for, hear and be healed. They came to hear and be healed. We've come to hear and be healed. We've come to hear and be victorious. We've come to hear and be free. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just come into agreement. We bind every voice that would accuse the accuser of the brethren that just tries to keep us condemned even when we are believing God. He just nitpicks us and hounds us. We bind the strong man now in Jesus' name. We stand against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We say that the atmosphere will be unhindered in Jesus' name, that we believe we have an ear to hear and a heart to hold the Word of God. And we're not hearers only, we're doers of the Word, and therefore we are blessed in all of our doing. We give you the praise. And we declare Jesus is Lord of this service. Jesus is Lord of Heartland. He's Lord of every inch of every acre. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Well, been good already. We'd go home now. Say it's good to have been there. Turn with me if you would. We've been on a, a, a kick for about three messages on the name, the name, the name. We found out that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and that's where they're safe. That's the place where no weapon formed against you is able to prosper. Right? That's the place of Psalm 91. That's the place that long life is automatic in that place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> David said in Psalm 62, he says, I wait only upon God. All my expectation is from him. He is my defense. That word defense is the same Hebrew word that's also translated strong tower. The name of the Lord is a defense, and those that run into it are safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's our defense. Defense. You know, the D in the fence. <laughs> He's your defense. Huh? So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. That's you. I'm t somebody, somebody needs to amen that. I, I want to deal with this for a minute because... As long as we don't see us like God sees us. As long as you see, listen, as long as you see yourself as some stray cat trying to just get a bone off of God. Hmm? It's like the, the children of Israel said, we were in our own sight like grasshoppers, so we were in their sight like grasshoppers. And the giants had already been defeated by the Lord. He said, I've already taken care of them. Now, you go in and possess the land. But when they saw the giants, they, they started seeing themselves. And they confessed, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Therefore, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. And so, when we say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, or the name of the Lord is a defense, and the righteous, say the righteous, the righteous run into the name and they are safe. That's the spot that 1 John 5, 18 takes place. The evil one cannot touch you. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Even though weapons are formed, they cannot prosper against you. Say this when we say, I am the righteous. I live in the name. The name lives in me. Man, don't you feel that? Say, it is my defense. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I live in the name. The name lives in me. The evil one cannot touch me. I live in the name. The name lives in me. Psalm 91 is where I live. Hallelujah. That's that place. No weapon. He said the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Say the name. 
The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's the same Hebrew word, defense. The name of the Lord is a defense, and the righteous run into it. The devil wants you to get a run away from it. Huh? Run away from it. Hide. Cover yourself up. You know, build your own fig leaf <laughs> like, like, like Adam did. Well, we need to run into the name. How many of you know there's nothing you can do to cover your sin? And I want to just say something here. You don't have to. <laughs> Jesus did it. The blood's enough. You know, there's a big difference between repentance. Are you here? Huge difference between repentance and penance. And too many church people that love God are trying to do penance instead of repentance. What would you add to the blood of Jesus? I remember me and Ronnie talking about this one day. What are you going to add to it? There's nothing you can do that would make you holy except receive Jesus. There's nothing you can do to make you more righteous except receive Jesus. Now, the, we, we understand there's a, there's a legal side to everything. That's everything God has done for you in Christ. There's a living side of it, and that's everything God does in you in Christ. But you can't walk out righteousness if you're not absolutely positively persuaded by the Word of God and by the witness of the Spirit that you are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so if we're not careful, you'll get the tail wagging the dog instead of the dog wagging the tail. You'll get in, listen, and you will even get in in the name of believing God. You'll, you'll put yourself right back into dead works. Huh? Listen, this is a sign that you're still in dead works even though you may not think you're in dead works. Is when other people's sins bother you more than your sins bother you. You're in self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is unrighteousness. Huh? Uh, we've said some things about it in the, in, in the last few weeks, so we'll just mention it again. you got to be careful that these kind of attitudes don't creep up in you because it reveals self-righteousness, which really self-righteousness is a lack of understanding or a lack of maturity in the true righteousness that comes only from God given to you through Jesus. And that's when you start gauging people's sins. You know what I'm saying? You need an example? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a thousand things we could say here. Well, look who got caught in fornication. Now you, you just complain. But him, he's a fornicator. Sin, sin. And where, did you, where does any of us have the right to say, now that's just a one on a one to ten, but that, that's a nine. I mean, that's right below the unpardonable. I had one guy ask me, he said, I'm so afraid I've committed the unpardonable sin. I said, what is the unpardonable sin? He said, I don't know. I said, you hadn't committed it. <laughs> so we can't, we can't put a, a gauge on, you know, oh, that, that, that's a serious sin. That one, eh. You know, only tens of thousands died in the wilderness for complaining. But the fornicator... Well, uh, so I want us to k keep talking about the name of Jesus, and we've been bringing it. Listen, the name is such a huge subject, especially if you read John 17. Jesus said, I kept them in your name. He didn't say, in your name I kept them. He said, I kept them in your name. Well, now that name has been given to Jesus according to Philippians 2, 9, and 10. God has given him 
the name that is higher and above every name that at the name of Jesus. That's not just J-E-S-U-S. We're not talking about letters. We're talking about authority. We're talking about platform. We're talking about kingdom of his government there's no end it's a kingdom that will never end it we're talking about eternal something that will never leave Jesus Isn't that wonderful and that's the same high priest that is representing you and it's because of him that you can come boldly Hebrew the Greek word would be publicly before the presence of God and E.W. Kenyon would always remind people righteousness really means that you can approach the very presence of Almighty God with no feeling of inferiority because we're sons of God and the thing that made us children of God is behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The love of God, which is the nature of God, which really you could call it eternal life. You could call it zoe. God is agape. So that is nature you're talking about. And that nature imparted into you. Listen, just right quick. Forgiving your sins would not have been enough. But if he hadn't have dealt with the sin nature... Because you would just be forgiven. It'd be the same as atonement in the, under, the, under the first covenant. You're cleansed, or you're, actually your sins are covered. But you still have the nature that drives you to do the deeds. You hear somebody. And so when, when the Bible says we were by nature children of wrath, but you've received a new nature, the eternal life of God, the love of God, the Holy Spirit, you could call it. So now if you sin... We doing okay here? These are huge thoughts, and we'll... I know why I'm being pulled to this. I don't have to share all that with you, but I know why. About, I'm only saying this to just show you the clarity of the Spirit of God and, and just the, the awesomeness of Him. About three weeks ago, I was laying in our bed, and Jody was uh, working in her in her recliner and I was in the bed and of course Rocco was right there with me and we were working we were reading and the spirit of God started dealing with me on the difference between sin and sins and he took me straight to Romans 6 and we're not going to go there tonight but I'm just building where we're going and, and I, he started focusing me on every time it says sin, 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 and every time that word sin is used, it's a noun. It's talking about the nature. It's talking about sin nature. Say nature. When it says sins, it's talking about deeds. And chapter 5 tells us through one man came death, Adam, but through another man, Jesus, came eternal life. And the free gift, say free gift. Free gift of right standing with God. Free gift of righteousness. Free gift of death through Adam to you. Free gift of made right before God because he's made right and I'm in him by faith and he's in me. Huh? His standing is my standing with God. When you received Jesus, you received all that he is in his standing with the Father. You go home right now and chew on that. I'm telling you for the rest of your life. That one statement. And so when you, it, 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 starts, it, it starts taking out this, this fear factor of the last verse in Romans 6 where he said, For the wages of sin is death. And let me say it this way. If one Christian is going to go to hell because he sins, then we're all going to hell. And I'm here to tell you that word is a noun, it's not verb. For the wages of the sin nature, you ain't got that no more. So he ain't talking to you. Huh? <laughs> I'm born again. I was by nature a children of wrath, but I ain't no children of wrath no more because I ain't got that old nature. Well, preacher, you know, the Bible says he that practices certain things won't inherit, the believer that practices certain things won't inherit the kingdom of God. It's right, but he didn't say he won't go to heaven or inherit the kingdom of heaven. He said he won't walk in the dominion of God here. He won't inherit the kingdom of God. 
big difference. Are you here? So it's, it's very important, you know, uh, <clears throat> how shall we that have died to sin? That's died to the sin nature. How? When I got born again. And even more so, I died to it then, but I found it out when the mind starts getting renewed and updated to what Jesus has done for me. Are you here? How shall we, so he's talking to the believer, how shall we who died to sin, stop, nature, noun, mama itself, the big wolf, the nature of sin, live in that nature, sin, any longer. You were baptized into Christ and you were baptized into his death so you are, will be raised in the likeness of his resurrection. But it's just important that when you're reading Romans 6 that you understand sin, 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 sin. He's talking nature, not deeds. It's very clear when he's talking deeds versus nature. Come on. If, if for the believer the wages of sin is death, Thanatos, separation from God, then we would all, about half the time, live ixnade from fellowship with Jesus because when we sin, life left us, we're dead. I'd have to be born again, again, if every time I sinned, the wages of sin was death for me, I would have to continually be born again, born again, I mean, sometimes 20 times a day. It just don't add up. The wages of the sin nature. Go back to chapter 5. Through one man came death. Through one man came life. Death, 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 death. He talks about it. And then he goes into chapter 6. And he's talking about these things. And he wraps it up in the end of chapter 6. Which really there's no ending because it's one letter. And he says, for the wages of that old nature is death. That's not you though. But the gift of God. Same gift we're talking about all through chapter 5. But the gift of God. Adam's gift was death. The last Adam's gift is eternal life. Come on. So we don't die every time we sin. Again, he's talking nature there. Now, I've been had these thoughts rolling around for quite some time, and I've been wanting to get to this on confidence in the name, but we're, we're, still, we're still building <laughs> Pastor would say we're circling the airport. <laughs> We've landed. We're just going real fast down the runway still. We're going to find our parking spot in just a minute and camp there just for a few minutes. Okay? Um, how many of you, and you need to be honest with yourself. You don't even have to raise your hand. I mean, I'd like participation. But how many of you have, are growing confident that, that he... He made you the righteousness of God in Christ. I mean, it's really, it's really a part of you, even though, you, you know, you struggle at times. But, 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 I mean, that's becoming reality to you. Raise your hand. I mean, that he made me the righteousness of God in Christ. I mean, the righteousness of Elohim. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. In my union with Jesus Christ. That's what I said again. And the same thing Jesus said, just a different way. When I received him, I received him in all of his standing with the Father. Yes. So, and, and that we should because 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin, listen, that's not just deeds, that's nature. He who knew not the sin nature became sin. Stop, not deeds. Jesus never deeded sin. <laughs> He became the sin nature. He became the nature of sin itself. Romans 5, Romans 6, Romans 7, that nature. Isn't that wonderful? He became, he who knew, that's experiential knowledge, he who it never experienced the sin nature became the nature of sin itself. Listen, the Bible says God made him to be that. Let me ask you again here in passing, did Jesus have to sin to be made sin? So why do I have to do righteousness to be made righteous? Okay, so he who knew experiential knowledge, he who knew no sin nature was made to be the sin nature for us. Huh? Now really that us there, that's the whole world. Whole world. He made him to be that for every person. 
He was made that before I received him, and he still made that for me. He's not still that, but he was already still made that for me. So, uh, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So we're getting a hold of this, and that takes some real meditation. I mean, you just got to really feed on that, that thought that I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say that with me. I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now here's the step higher that I want to talk a little bit about. Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians. Isn't it wonderful to come together? Oh, yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, I was been pulled on this, and, and I didn't know it until before I came, went over to the office to, to get ready to come up here. And <laughs> Brother Creflo Dollar is right now ministering, probably getting, getting ready to minister. Now the service starts at 7. He'll minister here in a little bit. You know what he's ministering on tonight? He, he said earlier he was going to minister on the difference between sin nature and sin deeds. It's one spirit. It's one spirit. By one spirit, we've all been baptized into one body. I mean, our brothers and sisters are in there, Fort Worth, worshiping the Lord. We'll be there tomorrow, worshiping the Lord. I mean, it's, it's one family. So it's just interesting how your spirit can be pulled and... And there's times that, you know, we'll be ministering, and all of a sudden, you know, I may think, this is nowhere in my notes. That's because somebody's pulling that out of you. That's why it's so important that people, people expect to hear from the Lord, and you have your faith on on the inside. Lord, I need answers. I don't have the answers, but the anointing has the answers. Huh? So, so you're always expecting. You come with expectancy, and you sit with expectancy. You listen. That's what it means to have an ear to hear. It's not these paddles on the side of our head. It's having an ear to hear. I have an ear to hear the Spirit of God. I have the mind of Christ. I believe God will show me things, tell me things to come. See? So 1 Corinthians, look at verse 18. Watch this, and we're going to read this verse. And then I want to talk about that step higher. 1 Corinthians 1.18, please. 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Now we know in 2 Corinthians 4, the ones who are perishing is those whom Satan, the God of this world, has blinded their mind, lest at any time they should believe and the glorious gospel should shine into them. But they're not hopeless. That's what the church is here for, is as God would give you opportunity, you're to shine the glorious light of the good news to somebody. And your message is to be, God's already reconciled you. Just receive him. Just just. Do you believe Jesus is Lord? Do you believe he was raised from the dead in your heart? The only thing the Bible says you must believe, I believe God raised him from the dead. I can't, I, can't, I don't even understand it. I can't really draw it out for you. But something in here, I just, that, that fits. It, it feels right. I believe God raised him from the dead. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord, born again. Now, that's what the Bible teaches. For if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall confess Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. There it is. Huh? Not real hard. There's not 20 steps and all this. So, <clears throat> watch this. For the message of the cross. Now, you, we're going to cut this up. You're with me, right? Yeah. All right. This ain't a, this ain't a drive through service right here. This ain't a little happy meal. We got, we're going to cut this up for a minute. You got to get this. This will grow us. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but... To us, say to us, who are being saved, it, read it with me, it is the power of God. What is the dunamis, miraculous power of God? The message of the cross. Okay. Now, this is important, too. The word message there is logos, word. 
The word of the cross is the dunamis, the power of God. Okay. It's not saying every message you preach has to be about the cross and that's the power of God. He's not saying messages about the cross is the power of God. He's saying the message, the word that comes ek, of, ek, out of, the word that comes out out of what he did on the cross is the power of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo-hoo! The, the, <laughs> the word, the word, say the word, the word, ek, out of, the word that comes out of the cross, still, the Bible says the blood is still speaking, the word that comes out of the cross is the dunamis of God. Well, okay. Hold your place there. Don't lose that place. <laughs> now watch. Hold your place there. Turn back to the book in front of it. Romans. Turn to the left to the chapter 1. My word. It's already good. He said the message, the word that comes out of the cross. The word that comes from the cross. We could say the word that comes from what Jesus did, that is the dunamis, miracle working power of God. Now that word of in front of God is act two. The message that comes out of the cross and the work that Jesus did is the power that comes out of God. Okay. Romans 1.16. Now, remember, he called it the message of the cross, right? The message of the cross is the power of God. The message of the cross is the power of God. Watch how he writes it here to the Roman church. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. So the message that comes out of the cross is the gospel. <laughs> Man, that's just good. What's the gospel? Well, let's let the Bible define the Bible. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Greek word, good news. I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ. Why? For it, hang on, what's it? The gospel. It, the good news of Christ, is the power that comes out of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 again, so he calls it the gospel here is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says the message of the cross, the word that comes out of the cross, what the cross did for us, what Jesus did for us on the cross is the power of God. So once again, the message of the cross, which is the power of God, is the gospel, which is the power of God. Are you still here? Too many words or not? Okay. Okay. This stuff takes words, okay? All right. Now, now that that's established, this house is clear now, okay? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm, uh, back to Romans, please, right quick. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. That's me. He's talking about me. You either believe this stuff or you don't. There's a lot of people sitting in church right now that do not believe. I'm telling you that. What you believe is what comes out under pressure. That's what you believe. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Watch this, verse 17. For in it. In what? What's it? The gospel, what do you mean the gospel? The message, the word of the cross, the word of what Jesus did. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed. So that means this. Jesus is the righteousness of God. I mean, you see that? What he did on the cross for us was righteousness. Come on, somebody. <laughs> this life-changing stuff, man. Now, real careful, like, go to verse, go to verse, back to 1 Corinthians. I mean, re, you got to tiptoe to this now. 1 Corinthians 1, 
24. My Lord, this is fun. So what is the message of the cross? The word, Logos. What is the word? Ek, the word that comes out of the cross. What Jesus did for us, it's the power of God. You ever, have you ever noticed that when anybody, anybody, any minister will, will preach about what Jesus has already done for you, something in your heart leaps. You know I'm telling you the truth. It's in here. Your spirit goes, man, that's, that's finger licking good right there. I mean, your inner man, he, he comes to, he, ooh, he stands up for that. Listen, when you know this stuff to be true, no man can condemn you. You can't preach hell hot enough to scare me. I'm serious. You can't preach judgment hard enough to... Oh, God's going to judge me for my sins. God judged my sins in Christ Jesus. Well, preacher, I got you now. The Bible says we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It does say that. Do you know what you're talking about? Because that's a judgment for rewards, not a judgment for eternal destination. We've already been judged for sins, and the Bible says if we'll judge ourselves, that's a daily thing. Father, forgive me for that. Release me for that. Jason, that was wrong. I judge that as sin. In the name of Jesus, I judge it, and in the name of Jesus, I repent, and in the name of Jesus, I receive grace, and I, in the name of Jesus, I walk on, go on, go on, get up. That's judging yourself. The Bible says we won't be judged with the world. That'd be the goat. Okay. So... The message of the cross, the word that comes out of the cross, the word that comes from what Jesus did on the cross is the power of God. He also calls it the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Watch verse 24, 124. Read it with me, please. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God. Oh, my word. That's getting to be a familiar statement tonight, the power of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Okay, so Christ is the power of God. Hmm. Really? All righty. The gospel is the power of God, which he called it the gospel of Christ. There's that word. Then he called it the Logos, the Word, the message of the cross. What Jesus did on the cross, what that did for us. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now watch this. Here's where we've been heading. Verse 30. You getting anything? Verse 30. But of him. That'd be the Father God right there. But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Notice it. One translation says, but by his doing you are in Christ Jesus. <laughs> well, how'd you get there? By his doing. By his doing. You are in Christ Jesus. Now, hang on. We just read that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom ek, from God, who became for us righteousness from God, and who became for us sanctification from God, and who became for us redemption from God. <laughs> this is the higher step I'm wanting to just, just, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't know. Don't matter. Here's the, this is, here's, we, we can believe to some degree, and we're getting a hold of because it takes, you got to hear it and hear it and hear it, and you got to see it and see it to believe. He was made sin nature for me, and I was 
made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus when I received him. So we can believe that he made us the righteousness of God to some degree, right? Can you begin to believe? Here's the step above it. Not only did he make me righteous, he is my righteousness. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the next step on the ladder. If he was made righteousness of God for you and you received him who was made righteousness of God for you, that equals you've been made righteous. Correct? Huh? We're the righteous brothers. <laughs> you lost that anyway. Okay. So we need to begin this, this path of I am made the righteousness of God in Christ because I received the one who was made. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my wisdom and he is my redemption. Truly, he is my all in all. Jesus is the entire package manifest by the Holy Spirit. That's why he's called the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, spirit of power, spirit of grace, all these terms. Isn't that wonderful, Big Cliff? My goodness. All right. Now, let's find out what the message of the cross, what's something that the cross is saying. John 19, 30, please. How, and I, I'm going to read this from the Passion because it is very accurate according to the Aramaic, which is the language they spoke. John 19, 30. Are you here? All right. And I'm going to read you a note from a, it's a scholar's note. John 19, 30, this is Jesus on the cross. Didn't we read that the message that comes at, out of the cross is the power of God? Yeah. Yeah. Brother, we could say this. When this message is going forth, the power is here. Yeah. Huh? huh? The power to deliver, it's there. Why? Because it's coming out of what Jesus did on the cross, and it is the power of God. Well, I don't feel anything. It is the power of God. Well, I don't feel any different. It is the power of God. Well, I don't understand. It'll help your understanding. It's the power. Are you here? Yeah. Yes. The Bible says in Luke 5, I think, it says Jesus was teaching. He's literally in his house. He said, he was teaching and the power of the Lord was present to heal them all. It didn't say, and one of them felt the power there. It just says the power was present to heal them. How was the power present to heal them all? Because he was there teaching the word. He was there teaching the Logos. <laughs> and listen, <laughs> he is the Logos. In the beginning was the Logos. The Logos was with God and, God, and the Logos was God. In the Logos was life, and without Logos was nothing made that was made. In Logos was life, and that life was the light of man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah. And to as many as received the Logos, he gave them the power. Yeah. Word is right and privilege. The privilege to become sons of God. How? Here in the Logos. What Logos? The Logos that comes out of the cross? Well, what's that? The power of God. It's what? The gospel. The what? The power of God. The what? The dunamis dynamite of God. Are oh, you here, somebody? Okay. Now listen to this. It's a good time, Brother Bob. John 19 from the Passion. Look at this. Read this with me. When he had sipped the sour wine, he said, this is Jesus. Ready? What did he say? It is finished, my bride. Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. He died by faith, believing that God your word is true and you're not going to leave my soul in hell because from this minute his body's on the tree and his spirit is a dead man separated from God he went straight to hell as a dead man spiritually cut off from the life of God 
He had to become what Adam and all the race was, and that was dead spirits separated from God, dead man walking. I'm talking about the original, well, not the original Adam would be, but the walking dead right there. Hmm? Jesus was the first man born again, and he was born again in hell. Absolutely fact. So listen to me. There ain't nowhere you can go that God can't reach you. Now, I want to read this note. He said, it is finished, my bride. Listen to this scholar's note. This is from the Hebrew word kala, a homonym that can mean fulfilled, completed, and bride. Jesus finished the work of our salvation for his bride. The translation has combined both concepts. <clears throat> Listen to this. Although the completed work of salvation was finished on the cross, he continues to work through his church today to extend God's kingdom realm on the earth and glorify the Father through us. Glorify the Father through us. He continues to work in us to accomplish all that his cross and resurrection have purchased for us his bride. His cross fulfilled and finished the prophecies of the Messiah's first coming to the earth. There was nothing written that was not fulfilled and now offered, now offered, now offered to his bride. I want you to just try to think of that him hanging on that cross and the last words of his living life here was, it is finished my bride. The Hebrew would literally say, debt paid my bride. Good. Boy, I mean, that hits you right there. Yeah. Debt paid. So listen to me. I'm going to say something that just, boy, hair lips religion. I don't have to pay for my sins. Jesus paid for them. I don't have to do penance for my sins. I don't have to cut myself off of nothing. I don't have to cut myself. I don't have to, you know, ground me. Uh, I don't have to do that. I don't, I don't have to do that. Jesus died. He became the sin nature, and he paid the price for my sins past, present, and future. Now, I'm going to tell you what. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, that the message of grace that came through Jesus will teach you how to live soberly and how to live righteous. Let's just turn there. Because <laughs> listen, this, this takes care of this thought. Well, you know, if you preach too much of that good old grace stuff, you're going to give people a license to sin. None of us have ever needed a license to sin. We sin just fine without a license. This stuff gives you a love for God, knowing His love, and it makes you want to be... That ring never has one time kept me faithful to her for 27 years. Love has. And it's the my love for Jesus that when I do miss it, I, God, I don't want to do that. Huh? If you can practice sin and basically flip the bird in God's face like, I don't even care. This thing, you, I, listen, you're not born again. You need to get another dip in it. <laughs> the Bible says if you're born again, you cannot practice sin boldly because the seed of God lives in you. Listen, if when you sin, you're having a war between your head and your heart, it's like, God, I don't want to do this. And you're, uh, whatever the sin is, whether it's spin, whether it's eat, whether it's masturbate, whether it, I don't care what it is. There ain't no extreme. Sin is sin. Huh? And if you have a war in your head and your heart, one wants to and the other one's going, God, I don't want to. God, help me. I don't want to. That is the proof that the Holy Ghost is alive and working in you. Isn't that wonderful? That's the proof. Listen to me. That's the proof you're born again because his spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. If you wasn't born again, you wouldn't be having that war, ah, that struggle, man. Come on. Shout, I'm born again. <laughs> woo -hoo. Man, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You don't need, no, matter of fact, it, no person can tell you you're born again. No, Only your spirit knows whether you're born again or not. And I just gave you one of the clearest examples I know of from, 
from the word and personally, I know I'm born again. I, I want to please God in here. I don't understand him. I can't spell it out. I can't draw it out. But I know I, know I want to please him. Well, listen, the Bible says you couldn't even do that if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. That's why he said, he that hath begun a good work in you, he will perform and complete it. The Bible says it is that same he that gives you even the desire to want to please God. Huh? That desire is down in here, man. That's the born again you, the new creation you. Well, then why do I still sin? Real simple, because you want to. And that you there is this guy. That's why I said there, there's, a, there's a struggle. There's a law at work in this guy, and there's a different, the law of God is working in my inner man. So he said there's a struggle, man. It's like, oh, and you gotta, but you got to learn how to bring this guy uh, under control to this guy. See? Now, Watch this. Let's, we're looking at right quick on this message of the cross. Then I want to get through a couple of scriptures here. Galatians 3.13. We'll read it from the Passion Office, please. If you don't have a Passion Bible, I would encourage you to get one. Amazon, they're about 30 bucks, I think. And I'm telling you, it'll open the Word of God to you in a whole new way. It's an extremely accurate Bible. Extremely accurate. And it reads like a love letter personalized and signed by God to you. There's lots of good Bibles, but I'm telling you, it's one of the most accurate. It's, 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 and it's one of the easiest to read, but it's fun because a lot of ones that are easy to read aren't real accurate. And so they're like good bathtub Bibles, you know what I mean? Just good, good story Bible. You know, the message is a good, that's that kind of Bible, in my opinion. A message is a good that kind of Bible. There's a lot of other ones that get real, I don't know the technical word, but they just get kind of, you know, and Jesus said, what's up, Peter? You know, something so like that. And Peter said, not much, sir. What's going on? And he said, come help me, young blood. Uh, but you don't want it to get so easy to read that it starts taking away. And you don't want to, when it comes to a teaching Bible, you don't want to be basing your belief and your doctrine and your eternal inheritance on something that was just, kind, you know, kind of watered way down. So there's lots of good Bibles, but the Passion is a very accurate Bible. Very accurate Bible. Bill Johnson, whether you know him or not, doesn't matter, but he's, he's very schooled in the Word of God. Uh, very effect, powerful ministry. He said, the Passion is the best work of translation in my lifetime. That's a big compliment to the Passion Bible. Now... Galatians 3.13, watch this, and let's, we'll just read it together, 13 and 14. Ready? Let's read it. Yet Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. Y'all, that is so, so, so huge. I would say something if I didn't think that you would allow immaturity I want to say it because I, I want. There, if we're not careful, there's still too much of blending two covenants that goes on. We still believe somehow. If you do what God says, God will bless you. But if you don't, you know I'm telling the truth. Listen, that's a blending of the two. Can I say something? And I'm going to listen. I'm going to trust that your immaturity won't stop being. You won't stop on faithfulness. Okay? There's a business side to the church. You understand that? Yes. Do you know that where he said, "Because you've not tithed, you are under a curse." Do you know that if I don't tithe, I'm not under a curse? Good, sir. Jesus is my redemption from the curse, not my tithe. I tithe because I honor God and it's His first and everything I have, including my heart, is His first. I don't tithe so that I can get the curse off of me. Jesus did that. All right, is anybody here with me? Huh? Come on now. (laughs) 
Everybody's feathers are like this now. Come on. Jesus told the people, uh, the Pharisees, he said, you ought to do these things, but you've left off the weightier, heavier matters, mercy and love and goodness, kindness. And he said, so you ought to do this. And is it true that God, is, Jesus still receives times? Absolutely. The earth and the fullness of it is his. He's got to be receiving it. But listen to me. If I miss it or eat, listen, I'm not under any curse now. If, if we had time, we could just show you that the curse has been dealt with the curse was given so that if I got out here, ah, electric fence, yeah, get back in here. That was the purpose of the curse. It was not God saying, ha, you want to play games? I know more games than Milton Bradley, fool. Curse. That was, that's not God. Are you here with me, anybody? That's not God. That wasn't the purpose of the curse. The curse was there. Now, is there still the curse? Listen, listen to me. You've got to be very careful with this. Not the curse of the law, but the curse of Adam's sin. That's why our bodies age. Huh? That's why the earth moans and groans. And, and that's, why, that's why Adam's lease is still here. And Satan's still the god of the system. Not the earth, but the system. The curse of sin is very uh, different than the curse of the law. The curse of the law was if you break a law, you're under the curse. And so many Christians have really not read it. He said, Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> if you observe all these commandments, now you need to remember there's 613 of them, not just the big 10, 613. If you observe to do all these commandments, I will bless you. But if you do not observe all these commands, cursed will you be in the city, cursed in the field, cursed in your basket, cursed in the womb, cursed, 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 cursed. Listen to me. Many Christians literally have not taken that seriously. They think this. Well, you know, if we, you know, 50% of the commands... God loves us and God will bless us. That's not what he said. He said if you observe all of them, 100%, and you can tie that to James, and he said if you fail in one commandment, you're guilty of breaking them all. That's the curse of the law. The curse that came upon you for breaking a commandment of the law. 613 of them. Boiled it all down to make it easy in 10. The Bible tells us that there was no man except Jesus that ever lived out all 613 and could uphold that. It was designed that way to make people like me and you go, I can't do this. I need grace, man. It promoted self-righteousness. Saul of Tarsus. Under the law, your kid talks back he won't honor his mom and dad he won't mind take him before the elders of the congregation stone him to death make an example of the whole camp do it now that's what it was well not my baby yeah you and your baby it was that strict it was that strict but the curse of sin is very different than the curse of breaking the, the commandments the curse of the law, Mosaic law. Are you here? Is it, am I making any sense? <laughs> okay, so if I practice sin and practice sin, I, I just, these things, they, we've got to be careful with these things. I think so much fear and just wrong information, we've got so much fear in a lot of people that love God just because it's not been rightly divided. I mean accurately, rightly divided. By enough of the body of Christ is what I'm saying. We should not be living in fear. We should, there God's not, won't ever give us a spirit of fear. Oh, I'm afraid God won't bless me. Where does it say that? Now we're back to meriting. Boy, I got us all up in a... In a, in a 
It's all right. I'm, I'm just telling you the, the word, okay? That's okay. Sometimes we need our, ruff, our, our ruffles feathered. <laughs> I'm not under the curse. I, listen, you can practice enough sin that, that the curse of sin can start getting up on you. But it's not the curse of the law. You broke the commandment, there you go. And that was the purpose of the, the Mosaic law, was to be, it, it, was, it, was, it was tutorers. It was, it, was, it was like those bumper rails you put up in bowling to keep, the, keep pointing us toward Jesus, where the pins are Jesus, and, and man, we're just boom, boom, boom. That's what, the Bible says that's what the law was, was, was schoolmasters to point us unto Christ. Under who? The power of God, the message of the cross, grace that says you cannot do this. Soon as God came down in fire on Mount Sinai and he said, tell all the people to do this, do that, do this. And he listed out so many things. Moses went down and he said, the Lord God of Jehovah has said do all this. And the people, here's pride, they said, all that he said for us to do, we will do it. You can't. So immediately, God institutes the law and the priests and the blood and animal sacrifices. Why? Because he knows you can't do it, and we've got to have blood to cover your sin. Because you can't do it even though you're trying. Are you here? God knew that, so he immediately institutes this stuff. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of breaking the command. I pray you're just receiving this. Now listen, stay faithful to God, okay? I'm going to send Bob to your house, talk to you. If you... <laughs> See, if hearing this would make me say, ha, hell with tithing, you never were doing it from the right heart anyway. And God is really not your first love anyway. I do, listen to me, there was times way back where I tithed because I want God to bless me. God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And, and you cannot take, you cannot take all the keys to the kingdom and put them all in one key called the tithe. And if you don't tithe, you're cursed. And if you do, God's going to bless you. It's one of the keys. But Christ has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. My tithe is an expression. I'm just saying about the tithe, but everything we do is an expression of our faith and an expression of my love for him. Huh? It's not just the 10% that's his. My whole harvest is his. My Harley's his. My cars are his. My trucks are his. Guns I've given away were his. Vehicles I've given away were his. You see what I'm saying? everything we have it's his Lord that's what Job meant when he was his heart when he said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord what he was saying was all that I have belongs to God we're doing all right so the curse of sin is completely different than the curse of breaking the law same thing is we're comparing it for the wages of sin is death and every time I'd sin, I'm going to tell you what, the devil will whip you, pop your sack lunch, and punk you, man, where this is not renewed to what that Bible teaches, especially under the new covenant. Oh, I sin. I'm separated from God because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin nature is death. I don't have that nature no more. If one Christian is going to go to hell for practicing a sin, we're all going to hell. It's just not true. Thank God for Jesus. All right. Got about 11 minutes left. Watch this. Uh, we probably ought to leave that one alone. That got pretty hairy. <laughs> Let, let, let's go into we've swallowed the, that we've chewed on that one a little bit go to 2 Corinthians 5 17 please let's look at this right quick in the passion translation please you getting anything thank God for it thank you Lord <laughs> I'm 
call easy money say that. Everybody's high. <laughs> no, not really. I never have. I don't. I pray it makes you want to give to God. Huh? Listen, it's not just the harvest. If somebody blesses you with, if somebody gives you $100, $10, whatever, you know what? The tithe of it goes to God because it was increased that came into my life. We just did that tonight with seed that was sown in our life before we got here. We tithed off of it. Why? Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase. The, 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 the tithe of it. Why? Because God brought it to me. And I give that back to God. Isn't that wonderful? That's just the Bible. I want to love him. Why? Because he flat out loves me. Loved me and loves me and will continue to love me. Huh? That makes me want to love him more. That doesn't make me want to practice sin. Then we, oh, yeah, the Lord just reminded me. He said, you said go to Titus 2. <laughs> Titus 2. Oh, Titus. We have a Titus here, Titus and Sarah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Titus 2, just look at this, just right quick while we're on, the Lord has us on this wonderful buffet. Titus 2.11 God's marvelous grace has manifested in person. Now that takes on a wonderful thought that grace is not a subject, it's a person. It's Jesus. Bringing salvation to everyone. Watch this. Watch what grace manifest does. This same grace teaches us how to live each day as we turn our backs on ungodliness. Hang on, what? What? Grace teaches us how to live each day. Grace teaches us how to turn our backs on ungodliness. Grace teaches us how to turn our backs on indulgent lifestyles. And grace equips us to live self-control. Come on, somebody! Huh? huh? Not law. Grace. Well, you teach too much of that grace, you're just going to have people sinning, sinning, sinning. No, real grace will teach you how to turn your back. It's not a New Year's resolution. It's an, it equips. It's an equipping. It's, a, it's an equipment, equipping of grace that teaches me how to turn my back on that and live each day. Come on, y'all. This grace teaches us. Say, grace teaches me. It teaches us how to live each day as we turn our backs on ungodliness. It teaches us how to turn our backs on, on an indulgent lifestyle. It equips us to live self-controlled. It equips us to live upright. It equips us to live godly lives in this present age. What does that? Grace. Huh? Who's grace? It's not a subject. It's Jesus. For the law came by Moses. Grace and truth came by the channel channeled in Jesus it is finished my bride debt paid my bride alright we're winding up we're getting to the little numbers now on that clock back there I like when there's four of them still we're in, we're in triple digits now oh, double digits it's seconds not really I pray we've said something that just makes you love Jesus more. Just makes you go, wow, I've never, I, you know, it don't make a lot of sense, but good. It feels in here. Thank God for the word. That was Titus. St. Corinthians, right? We're going to go from the Passion Translation and we'll wind up now. I really love, I can love them. I love Wednesday nights. I mean, you get deeper. It's a different anointing on Wednesday nights. You, you, your, your word, everybody, I, I trust everybody loves the word, but your word people are there on Wednesday night. It's Bible school. It's a Bible study. <laughs> it's a, or a Holy Ghost meeting or whatever. St. Corinthians, let me find it. I know it's in here somewhere. 
Huh, it's right after 1 Corinthians. It's, it's the son of mom and, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Corinth, Corinthian. This is baby Corinth. <laughs> second, second Corinthians 5, 17. Watch this. You mind if I sit down just for a second? Second Corinthians 5, 17. I can swing my legs and do this. <laughs> We're with family. <laughs> now watch this. This is the Passion Translation. Therefore, if anyone... Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's it, right? Yeah. Now, if anyone is enfolded, enveloped into Christ, say, that's me. He has become an entirely new person. Then why do I still struggle with those things? Because you still have the same soul, same mind, and same body. And the thinking still thinks the same, pre-born again, during born again, after born again. That's why after you're born again, the Bible puts most emphasis on renewing, which we would call updating. Renovate is the word. The Greek word means to tear the old out, put the new in. After born again, I have to renew this to see me like God sees me. Or even though I'm a new creature, I live like the old creature still, even though I'm free from everything the old creature was bound by. I mean, you're made a giant in Christ, but you think like a grasshopper. Remember that open vision that Pastor Ken had? Him sitting in that, he was sitting in a prison cell like this, and he was sitting there with his hands on his knees, and he was looking. He said, and far as I could see down this long, long, long hallway was just cells, and they were all open, open, open. He said, and I looked up, he said, my cell door was open too. That's what Jesus has done for us. Now, through the, the word and renewal of the mind, I do this, and God's, I start stepping out of the cell and walking into freedom because Jesus said, listen, debt paid, bride. Debt paid, bride. Debt paid, bride. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of breaking the law. Christ has redeemed I want to say it again. Christ has done, done it. He redeemed me. He bought me out of the curse that would come upon me for breaking a command. That's why even when you don't walk or I miss it, you miss it, in the commandment given to the New Testament church, love each other the same way I've loved you. Well, when you, when you miss it or you withhold it a little bit, does God go, fine, whoop, and step out of you? Why no? <laughs> no. Why? Because he's redeemed us from those kinds of th those things. That's why he said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. It really means I'll never turn my heart away from you. You may turn yours away from me for a season, but I mean the moment you're, you, you won't get away from it, though. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there with me. Isn't that true, y'all? Mm. I mean, you go on a sin binge, and God is there because he's there in your spirit because the spirit of God's in there. And that's why even while you're practicing it, you're, you're just, you don't want to be there. Your flesh wants it, but you don't want it. Your flesh wants it, but you're not your flesh. You have flesh, but you're the spirit man, the new creation. You don't want to be there. Huh? And that's where the spirit of God, the word of God, the, the rhema, the logos, the Jesus, the Christ lives. Hmm? Yeah. So now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. We're winding up with this passage all the way to 21. Now watch this. Let's read it. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold! That means look! Everything is fresh and new. Okay, let's find out some of this fresh and new. Ready? Ready? And God has made all things. Please read it with me. Your, you, your ears need to hear your lips saying it. That faith comes that way. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. See, that's our job. That's not the angel's job. That's not Jesus' job. That's our job. Okay, let's keep, let's, let's keep going here. Ready? In other words, 
It was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world, not even keeping records of their trade. <laughs> Folk ain't heard that. The church on the for the majority, that's not the message that the church has told the sinner. They've told him, turn or burn, turn or burn. Huh? Am I right? That's why I thank God this is a house of love. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I've been to some churches, I'm serious, way, back, way, way back. They were more critical of me than my center friends were critical of me. Huh? When the mess hit the fan, it was my center friends showed up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I had one person tell me, well, you know, I just don't think it's right that you teach Caleb how to fight. I said, well, it's funny. When your kid's getting punked on and beat up, he calls Caleb, and Caleb whooped that tail, and then you're thankful Caleb was there. <laughs> but I just don't think you ought to be showing him how to do that. I said, well, well. well, you didn't mind when your kid was getting teed off on, and Caleb showed up and whooped that. <laughs> that. <laughs> And he's like, oh, sweet Caleb. <laughs> By you and I scream. <laughs> huh? Yeah, then there's cheering. 55, number 55. Raw, 55. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Moving right along. <laughs> Y'all, this is, this is the message here to the world. We just now got to zero, so I'm closing, I promise. It was God that was shepherding the world. Think about that. It was God that was shepherding the world. I want to say something right quick on this word, shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not lack no good thing. It is the shepherd's job to lead the sheep to still waters, to make sure they're laying down in green pastures, and it's the shepherd's job to drive the the wolves away and I'm talking about all of our shepherd the Lord the Lord Jesus he's our shepherd that's why when we live in him and abide in him we go where he says go that, that's where the still waters are stop stay here for a while okay camp it. stay right here don't move I don't care what it looks like or how many are saying move the shepherd the Lord Jesus his spirit if he hadn't told you to move you better stay in the green grass because outside of the green grass, listen, not the curse, but the curse of sin is still there. huh? And that's where the evil one can eventually. Now that, even that takes, that takes a lot of time. You've got to go past a lot of wooing of the Spirit. Get back, get back. Intercession going on. People, God putting you on people's hearts, and they're holding you up, holding you up, holding you up, holding you up. I mean, God is long-suffering with us, y'all. Am I right? So he was shepherding the world, not even keeping records of their transgressions. Get a hold of this. Who is there their transgressions, the world. Huh? God ain't keeping the sin. God has, listen, he has no filing cabinets up in heaven of anybody's sins. The world, not keeping records of their transgressions. And he has entrusted to us the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God. Verse 20, watch this. We, let's read it. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf. There's, there's operating in the name right there. On Christ's behalf. Here's what we're supposed to tell them. Ready? Turn back to God and be reconciled to him. Here's still what we're telling him. Because God made the only one who did not know sin nature to become sin nature for us so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. There's the message. Huh? That's the message to the sinner. I mean, while he's cussing, cussing, he's supposed to cuss. He's a sinner. You born again, you still cuss. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> Don't look at him funny because he's a sinner and cusses. 
But there's the message. Turn back. God's already reconciled you. I just got to get right with God. Well, that's real easy. Just say, Lord Jesus. <laughs> are, are, are you here, anybody? Oh, let's stand on our feet tonight. I'm so glad you were here. Sir, thank you. Listen to this, Brother Bob, and I'll close. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Now listen to this. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Now listen to this verse. This goes right along. Oh, soul, are you wearied and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. And then they sang the chorus, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Listen to this verse. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Oh, my Lord. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Upon who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. In that same key? Jesus. Yeah! He's the one we're looking at, y'all. Come on. <laughs> Listen to this last verse. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Shoo. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. And you tell them, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Can you just say from your heart, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> God bless you tonight. Live victorious. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Mm -hmm.